In this first part of modifying the basic shapes, we are going to tackle three different ways to do so. These principles are based on 3D modeling techniques that we can use in our drawing and design process to modify the basic shapes to fit our needs. These tools are skewing, extruding, and beveling. Let's start with skewing shapes. Using this tool means simply to move one part of the object in one direction while keeping the other part stationary. To do that, let's draw a box and see how we can skew it afterward. Now to move this box toward the vanishing point on the right, we have to know how much we want to move it. If we want to move it one unit to the right, we can use measurements and divisions to copy the box to the right side and use it as a guide afterward. So I find the center of the face first, then connect it to the vanishing point. Next I connect between the corner and the new edge center to duplicate the box to the right. Once I have the new box in place, I can use the top of it to become the new top of the box while keeping the base of the first box as it is. Now that I have the skewed top, all I have to do is to connect it back to the original base of the box. And there you go, a skewed box done in an easy way. You can always decide how much of a skew you want it to be by measuring the shift prior to drawing the final box. If you want to skew this box to the other direction away from the vanishing point, all you have to do is duplicate it again and use the shift as the new top or the new bottom, depending on what you want. And use the original box as the base or the original top. Now we can use the same process with the cylinder, moving the top plane to the side using the same duplicating method and then connecting the new top ellipse to the bottom one. In case we want to shear part of the box, we can divide the box into parts. Move these parts to the side and then connect between the new and the old parts to get the new modified shape.
The ways you can use this are endless, and it's a very simple tool to master. Moving on to the next tool we can use to modify the basic shape, and that will be extruding, a very important and useful tool to use, especially with mechanical and inanimate objects. We saw before how we can duplicate a full face to the side by finding the center and duplicating the face using it. But what if we want to only extrude a part of the face instead? In this case, we find the center of the face and then choose the limits of the area we want to extrude by choosing a point on the diagonals and connect that point to the vanishing point and from it all around the other diagonals using vertical lines. Now that we have a recess area in the face, we can now connect these points to the other vanishing point to extrude that part out of the box. Once we decide how much we want it out, we can connect the edges on the other side to the vanishing point. And here it is. Let's just hide the back end of the original box since it's behind the extrusion now. And there we go, an extruded part of the box done. Let's do it again but now for the new element. Let's find the center, decide how much we want to recess for the new extrusion, connect it to the vanishing point, and move it out. Now let's hide the parts behind the new extrusion to see how this will look like. You can keep doing this over and over as much as you want, which will be a great exercise to do. You can fill a whole page with extrusion from one box all over the canvas. It's a very useful tool to use to roughly shape up a complex shape using different extrusion before smoothing it all out, just like we do in 3D. Let's try to do a more complicated shape. Let's say we have a chest of drawers, and we want to draw two drawers of it. So here is where the extrude comes in handy. Let's first find the center and the diagonals for the front face so we can recess the area of the drawers. Next, I split the area in half for each drawer. Now that we have each area outlined, I find each area's center and recess each area into its final size of the drawer. And here is each door final outline. Time to extrude them out. Now I can make them protrude out a little bit, but it depends on if they are closed or just open. So let's extend the points of each door by connecting them to the vanishing point. Now I have to decide how much each door is open. I can open them the same way or make each one unique. So I push the top door a bit further and draw the final shape of them. Time to clean up some lines and hide the back lines behind the open drawers.
Extruding is a very important tool to master, if you want to draw complicated shape and perspective of course. It's simply building on previous tools and measurements we talked about before. That's why it's very important to learn these lessons in order, so you don't miss out on how things work and how to build on your previous knowledge to do more and more complicated shapes and objects. And as I said, things are going to get really complex from here out. So if you need to go back and learn any measurements or duplication lessons, go right ahead. I can now do some refinement like recessing the top area of the drawer and make an outline for the drawer so they look a bit hollow and not a solid object. But we are going to leave that for future lessons. You can also add some handles in the center and so on, but are not necessary for this stage. Let's move on to the third modifying tool for the basic shapes, beveling. Beveling is basically an extrude with an angle, or an extrude with an incline rather than extruding a straight line. It's simply skewing and extruding mixed together. Let's draw a quick box and see how we can bevel it up. Let's say I want to extrude the top but on an angle. So first, I find the center of the top face and recess the area a little bit before we start extruding it. We already did the same process before but here since it's a two point perspective, we can just extrude the face straight up on vertical lines and decide how high the extrude will be. So far it's the same process as we did before for the extrusion, but here is the main difference in beveling. Instead of keeping it straight, I connect the top new area to the bottom one with an angled line. It's like we did in the skew tool but with the extrusion. We can do the same process again for another smaller area on top. First extruding it out. and then extruding another smaller area on top and finally connecting it back with an angled line. With beveling, you get more smooth shape to make it look more believable. Since there are no straight lines in reality, but mostly beveled edges. Now we can do the same for the cylinder. We make the extrusion first on the surrounding box, beveling it, and then turning the extruded plane into an ellipse. Or since we are working on Photoshop, we can just copy the ellipse, shrink it a bit, extrude it then upward, and then connect the lines like we did before for a quick bevel. This is how I would usually do it while working on a project. But if you want to do it the correct way and the accurate way, you do it to the surrounding box first and then turn the rectangle into ellipses and connect in between them. And this is how a beveled cylinder would look like. We can do the same for the bottom and connect it back to the main cylinder. This is now a beveled cylinder from both ways, or what we call in 3D a chamfered cylinder.
Before we conclude this lesson, I want to ensure that you grasp the complete concept of perspective by using 3D examples. By witnessing it in motion rather than the static drawing, you will have a better understanding for the situation. We are going to do more exercises on these tools later on, especially in the exercise video that coming at the end of the chapter 1. But for now, these are one of the easiest methods to modify and manipulate basic shapes into more complex shapes that we can use later on to draw real objects in perspective. These are really important to learn and to master in order to build on with more tools and modifiers later on. Do as many examples on these tools as possible. Practice them a lot, since you will be using them on basically every drawing you do in perspective. In the next lesson, we will talk about more tools that expand on the ones we talked about in this lesson. These tools will include fillet, chamfer, smooth, and subdivisions. It's going to be a lot to talk about. So let's end this lesson here and continue in the next lesson. If you like this lesson, feel free to leave a like. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. To stay notified for future lessons, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next lesson.